The significance of the Washington Monument really needs no explanation now, but there are just a few details to fill in. On July 4, 1848, the cornerstone of this monument was laid by Benjamin B. French, Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia, as part of a Masonic ceremony. Hundreds of lodges contributed to the building of the monument, which contains 35 Masonic memorial stones interspersed with the rest. The numbers involved are quite intriguing with the Washington Monument. At the ground level, each side of the monument measures 55.5 feet, which is 666 inches exactly. The height of the obelisk is 555.5 feet, which is 6,666 inches. There are other more complicated numbers and combinations of numbers that are often centred on the number 13, also concealed within this structure. I won't go into them all individually, but in Chaldean numerology the number 13 represented a number indicating change of plans, place and such like, and is not unfortunate as is generally supposed. In some of the ancient writings it is said, he who understands the number 13 will be given power and dominion. It is a symbol of power which, if wrongly used, will wreak destruction upon oneself. It is a number of warning of the unknown or unexpected if it becomes a compound number in one's calculations. So the numbers themselves convey a message to the initiated. In this case it's saying that America represents a change of plan and location, which would mean the change away from France, and that it will be a country of great power. The Statue of Liberty is perhaps the most recognisable American landmark. Indeed, she is almost synonymous with the USA. It is quite widely known that the statue is a gift from France to America, but the details of the structure give the game away. The gift was in fact from the French Grand Orient Temple Masons to the Masons of America, in celebration of the centenary of the First Masonic Republic in 1884. It was commissioned by the French mason Edward Le Boulay, who wanted to create a giant statue replicating a goddess that the Masonic movement idolised. Le Boulay was responsible for raising the finances necessary for the project and commissioned fellow mason Frederick Bartholdi to produce the designs for the sculpture. It was then built by Gustave Eiffel, also a Freemason, who would sculpt this goddess of illumination from ancient times the same goddess they had enthroned at Notre Dame. The Statue of Liberty remains the biggest idol of the goddess Asherah in the world today. Her name there is the Roman Libertas. Some who have recognised the Masonic link call her by her Egyptian name Isis. Really, it doesn't matter what name she's given, it's the same goddess from Babylon. Libertas in ancient Rome was the goddess of personal freedom and liberty and was popular for her promotion of the idea that people should be free to do whatever feels good. She was called the matron goddess of prostitution because she promoted sexual freedom. Indeed, according to the Roman system, she had invented the concept. This isn't surprising when we remember that Semiramis was a brothel keeper. Different name, same characteristics as always. Slaves considered her their goddess as well, as they looked to her as their hope for freedom. Many female slaves who gained their freedom later turned to prostitution to survive, and thereby retained Libertas as their goddess. The Statue of Liberty holds in her right hand the Masonic Torch of Enlightenment, and her official title is Liberty Enlightening the World. Her pose is actually quite similar to that of Baphomet again. The cornerstone of the monument was laid with full Masonic ceremony and the base contains a plaque dedicated to the Freemasons of New York. The crown of seven spikes represents the enlightenment of the sun god. The idea was that the illumination could be focused down each of the seven spikes which would radiate to the seven main land masses or continents of the world. The statue was originally to be made in colour and her robes would be purple and scarlet which would align her with the prostitute woman in Revelation. This idea was later abandoned when it became clear the statue would need to be built from copper due to financial constraints. It has also been suggested that the sculptor, Bartholdi, had originally designed an effigy of Isis for the opening of the Suez Canal in Egypt in 1867. When it was rejected for that initial purpose, he merely adapted it slightly as the gift for New York Harbour. The Statue of Liberty is not just the largest idol of Asherah, it is the largest idol ever made by human hands and beats the previous record holder, the Colossus of Rhodes, into a distant second place. 
Now this is the American one dollar bill, one of the most recognizable and iconic pieces of currency in the world. It is packed with Masonic symbolism. You will see two circles containing unusual images. The one on the left now needs little explanation if you've been following this series from the start, but we can unpack it a little bit more. The Latin surrounding the all-seeing eye reads, Annuit Coeptis Novus Ordo Seclorum. This means announcing the birth of the New World Order. The occult agenda is to see the whole world come under a global system of governance, and the designers of the Great Seal here clearly saw that the Masons in America would make it a key player in the birth of that New World Order. Coincidentally, a form of inverted pentagram spelling out the word Mason can be found by connecting the first and last letters of some of the words together. There are also multiples of the number 13 in the dollar bill. For example, there are 13 layers in the pyramid. I'm just speculating here, but because there are believed to be 13 Illuminati family bloodlines in the world today, this could mean that these 13 families of power are the ones constructing the foundations upon which the capstone, Lucifer, or the Antichrist will come. The symbol on the right has just as much esoteric symbolism. Manly P. Hall writes, European mysticism was not dead at the time the United States of America was founded. The hand of the mysteries controlled in the establishment of the new government for the signature of the mysteries may still be seen on the great seal of the United States of America. Careful analysis of the seal discloses a massive occult and Masonic symbols, chief among them the so-called American Eagle. The American Eagle upon the Great Seal is but a conventionalized phoenix. The phoenix from the flames is basically the order out of chaos motif, the idea that out of the flames of war and pain and chaos comes an end which has justified the means. You might remember it from the front of Albert Pike's book, Morals and Dogma. Now this American bird has 13 leaves in the olive branch in its left claw, 13 bars and stripes in the shield, 13 arrows in its right claw, a ribbon saying e pluribus unum, which as we know means out of many one, and this has 13 letters, 13 stars in the crest above his head, and these stars create a hexagram. Again, the hexagram has six points, six angles, and six planes, so it represents the number 666. It is used to invoke Satan and can be considered to be the most wicked symbol in the world. Finally, the right wing on the bird has 32 feathers and the left has 33, which represents the degrees of Freemasonry. Now finally in this part, we'll look at the Washington DC street layout. Now here we have a satellite view of the center of Washington DC. We will notice certain things about it if we study it in detail. The first thing is that the street layout creates an inverted pentagram, with the southern point being the White House. However, notice that the Washington Monument obelisk does not align with the White House. Instead, it aligns with what lies behind the White House, the Supreme Council Masonic Temple. The decision to build along this line shows that the Masons believe the real power of the United States doesn't lie with the temporal president, but with the spiritual power they perceive to be behind the president. We have already noted the significance of the Washington Monument in relation to the Capitol and how the two are meant to generate a kind of spiritual energy. If we connect it to the Lincoln Memorial at the other side, we get an inverted Tau symbol. The Tau symbol represents Tammuz and in astrology the Taurus bull, both of which point to it being a symbol for Baal. Draw a line from the US Capitol and the Lincoln Memorial up to the Masonic Temple and you create a triangle or pyramid style shape with the temple as the capstone, the place where the all-seeing eye would be. This once more represents the power of the fraternity. Finally, I'm more sceptical of this one, but it's been suggested that if we connect the White House to the Capitol and then down to the Jefferson Memorial, we can also make out a compass and square as shown in the photo.